G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I'm feeling a little bit sheepish and sort of silly right now. Here I was not that long ago, less than 24 hours ago, and we were looking at, I think it was around about $970 billion. And I was saying, look, I expect uh, we might see a little bit more downside. And boom! <laughs> Crypto comes in and just gives me a good old slap to the face and says, no, no. We do what, what we do what we want, not what you think we're going to do. And look, in all fairness, I don't mind when I get slapped by crypto like this because it was to the upside, not to the downside. To the downside is when it really hurts. When I think it's probably going to go down a little bit more and it just pumps up, I don't have any problems with that whatsoever. So it's a good slap in a way. It was a money slap. Uh, and I don't, though, I don't mind that kind of money slap. So... You know, well done, uh, cryptocurrencies, for uh, doing the complete opposite of what probably a number of us thought was going to go on. Uh, and look, we'd all have to be feeling pretty happy around about now. BTC dominance did climb a little bit. This was down around 61%. So ETH dominance dropped a little bit. Gas prices still way too high. You know, we'll talk about some uh, layer two solution stuff. Uh, at some stage, we'll look into what kind of the big solutions are. But we definitely need this to come down. Now have a look at Bitcoin. Oh, nice move. 5%, up 5% in 7 days. It already has started to retrace though. So, you know, we don't want to get too carried away just yet. Uh, it could be a bit of a fake out. But at least at the moment it's looking pretty good. And look, some of the altcoins did pretty good too. So we can see Ethereum. Again, it's getting up to around that $1,400 mark. It just keeps, you know, kind of touching it and then dropping down a little bit. At some stage, uh, it's going to make a move and it's either going to push up real hard or push down real hard. My guess is push up real hard, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, what's really moved? Like we know Bitcoin made a move. It's been down around kind of 30, 31-ish sort of thousand and it got up to I think about 36,000 uh, for a minute there. So pulled back a little bit. But look, 24 hours. Has anything really pumped? Yep, Ravencoin. All right, I have no idea why that really pumped, but congratulations to Ravencoin, Voyager Coin. Uh, nice pump by them. They did have some technical issues going on, so I'm not sure what happened there, but, you know, congratulations to them. Now, Dogecoin is obviously... Uh, you know, slow down a little bit and we'll have to wait and see whether this is just the start of a continued really big pump or is this now going to kind of uh, retrace and come back to some sort of quieter levels. But, you know, just from looking here, it looks like it's forming a little bit of a uh, wedge there. So we'll have to wait and see. Alpha Finance. So again, this was something that was outside the top 100 for a while and has pushed its way in. So congratulations to them. And look, a number of coins generally doing uh, pretty good. So yeah, I'd say most people are feeling pretty happy. But what about losses? Were there any big losses from the top 100? Nothing too bad. The graph, you know, 10%, but it's still up 11.9% over seven days. I really like the graph and what they're about. I've spoken about them before. Uh, I will look to uh, put more into that. It's more a really long-term hold. Uh, again, in a couple of months' time, a whole, not a whole lot, but at least a reasonable amount of graph will be released onto the market. Uh, well, released to uh, early investors, I should say. And if they just suddenly want to sell, then it may have some downward pressure. But long term, uh, data and all the rest of it, I think that's going to be massive. So this is more a play for in the future. You know, if I make some money off this uh, and this uh, bull run, then that'll be great. But I'll really be holding on for it longer term. Um, look. A double digit loss. Now there's only one in the top 100 that it did a double digit loss, uh, but you know nothing too bad. I mean, look at Phantom, you know, up 300 and something percent. So again, something from outside the top 100. Now, if you want to get big crazy gains like that, by all means, look outside the top 100. But it just starts to get, you know, it's really a bit of potluck unless you've really done some good research. For me, I like to invest mostly in the top 50. I do have a couple of coins outside the top 50. And look, I do have a couple of coins outside the top 100 as well. But I only put very small amounts into them because they are just too risky unless you really know your stuff. But these losses look nothing too bad. And again, 4% for Lubring, but it's still up 12% uh, for the seven days. So again, these aren't too bad. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So my little squiggle here. 
uh, has been invalidated. Now, look, whether this will last or not, it's still possible that this rolls over and comes down because look what we can do here. If we basically sort of put a trend line in here, sorry. I'll just fix this up a little bit. All right, we'll put that in around about there. And other than we wicked out, this is still in a downtrend. So we'll have to wait and see. Does this roll over and then continue to start come to come back down here? Or is it going to break uh, out of this pattern? And look, it's sitting right on the line at the moment. And what do we got? It's uh, 1.44 uh, in the morning, uh, wherever this is sort of happening. So uh, it's very early uh, in the start of this day. So, uh, you know, unless we're just going into, again, some bear market uh, type stuff, chances are this is going to invalidate this uh, and, you know, continue at least, you know, it might break out and then sort of come back down and test this and then start to push up. But again, that's just a guess. It's not financial advice. It's just my personal opinion, uh, again, from spending some time in the markets. But, you know, it was good to see at least this little brief recovery from this downward spiral. So, you know, we've been going down since the 9th of January until the 27th of January. So around about three weeks of downwards price action. So that's pretty reasonable uh, in a bear market, uh, sorry, in a bull market. Again, usually they're a little bit more volatile, but this is a, you know, the, the market is a bit different this time. We truly have that institutional adoption now uh, and retail hasn't even really got started. It's not that they're not here uh, on retail and know your retail, but we haven't had the real crazy retail stuff. Uh, I know when I get around, you know, no one's really asking me about cryptocurrencies, except for the people that kind of know that I'm in it. But, you know, it's not like kind of people that I don't know I'm in crypto are coming up and saying, oh, you heard about Bitcoin and, you know, this coin and that coin. That's not happening. And that's how I know, you know, the, the kind of bigger scale of retail they're not here yet uh, and unfortunately they're generally the last to get here uh, and they're the ones that get burned so uh well look that just turned red there you go that was a green candle so maybe it's going to be red but again it's very very early this candle uh, only just started an hour and 46 minutes ago so it's still got plenty of time to sort itself out but this uh is concerning this wick here it pumped right up but uh it, it couldn't hold so this could still be uh, just another part of this downward trend. Really, we'd need to see this line uh, sort of invalidated uh, to prove that. But anyway, let's move on. The revolution is here, ladies and gentlemen. So this one uh, is about Robin Hood's handling of GameStop trading. Uh, and again, we've spoken about this the last couple of days. You know, big hedge funds, they want to short GameStop. Uh, all of a sudden... You know, Wall Street Bets decides, no, we're going to long it and invest in it. Uh, and it starts to go, not, yeah, I guess it did. It went a little bit parabolic. But, uh, you know, all of a sudden, Robin Hood, we're going to say, probably was under some pressure from some hedge funds and that, uh, who they've been buying the data off Robin Hood to counter trade against their members. And Robin Hood has been selling the data from their users uh, to these hedge funds, knowing that they counter trade. And they don't care, they're just making money. Uh, I really hope uh, Robin Hood uh, is no more. I, I hope the whole system just gets uh, annihilated by lawsuits uh, and by its users that they abandon uh, it in mass. That is absolutely, that is market manipulation right there. Uh, selling their users' data to hedge funds so they can counter trade against them. That is horrendous. That that shows that they're just out for the money. They don't care who they hurt. Uh, and again, you know, if all of a sudden the user said, oh no, we'll pay you more money to outdo the hedge funds, they'd take that money. But you know, that's never going to happen. The hedge funds will always win. Uh, and I think the SEC absolutely has to look into this from both sides though. The SEC knows what the uh, hedge funds have been doing to, you know, retail traders forever and a day, forever and a day, and it's okay for them to do it to us, but it's not okay for us to do it to them. Decentralization uh, is the only way. We need to get rid of, you know, all centralized kind of, and not all, there needs to be some centralized entities, but a majority of them. And, you know, hedge funds, you know, 
they play a part and you know they make money for you know certain individuals and bigger pension funds and things like that but they line their pockets the most uh, and their investors and they don't mind crushing anyone else other than their own hedge funds and you know there are the hedge fund buddies you know new smaller hedge funds that they don't know and uh, you know don't have anything to do with they're probably happy to crush them as well so there's upsides and downsides but let's have a look what's written here the U.S. securities watchdog is looking into the affair of Robin Hood and the Redditors. At least not in so many words, the Securities and Exchange Commission made a joint statement on Friday expressing concern over the extreme price volatility of certain stocks, trading prices over the last several days. Though the Commission didn't use the words GameStop, Robin Hood or Reddit, it's obvious that the Commission is talking about the recent chaos surrounding the three. It's already attracted major, major regulatory pressure. The SEC did, however, specify the Commission will closely review actions taken by regulated entities that may disadvantage investors or otherwise, excuse me, unduly inhibit their ability to trade certain securities. Yep, they had no right to stop trading uh, on what is it? Oh God, GameStop, sorry. Uh, it, it should be a free market and people should have been able to buy it. They were able to sell it, they just weren't able to buy it. Uh, and that is, yeah, that's crook. Um, so Robinhood, already the subject of enormous backlash from its users, is clearly in the sights of this announcement as it is the regulatory, regulated entity, i.e. broker-dealer, that... Uh, at the heart of the news. It is not unprecedented for Robinhood to shut down trading on GME and other stocks, but the firm's shutting off of sales, uh, sorry, so it was the other way around, shutting off of sales, but not buyers, uh, provoked mass ire from investors and casual observers. Look, I I almost got into Robinhood uh, quite some time ago when I was still interested in shares and all the rest of it, uh, but I'm glad I didn't because uh, it is horrific to learn that they were selling the data of their users to the hedge funds so the hedge funds could counter trade against you. Uh, and now the hedge funds got counter traded against. Uh, and, you know, we can't prove it, but no doubt the hedge funds rang Robin Hood and said, hey, you need to put a stop to this. This is really hurting us. And so that's exactly what they did. Uh, and uh, shutting off sales, I'm going to say it was possibly the other way around. But anyway, Robin Hood, see you later. Goodbye. Uh, we need to get rid of things like this. Now, um, yeah, we'll go with this one. BlackRock, all right, CEO says Bitcoin might become a store of value, but has to prove itself. I find this interesting. I would think after 12 years, it probably has proven itself. But he does say some things I, I, I agree with. It's too volatile at the moment for most people. Uh, it does need to mature more in those senses where people will feel more comfortable getting into it and not having to suffer, you know, in previous history, you know, 80% uh, downsides and then having to wait a number of years for it to go back up. But look, in all fairness, if you had bought uh, gold at its last all-time high, uh, you've waited a long time for it to kind of get back there. And I'm not sure even what it's trading at the moment, but I don't think uh, it's up around the $2,000 mark anymore. I think it's a little bit lower. So it's very interesting that he says it still has to prove itself, yet uh, BlackRock are getting into uh, Bitcoin futures. Uh, so that is bullish. Uh, they're obviously, uh, you know, getting into the market, but I think they're a little bit uh, still hesitant on Bitcoin itself. Uh, but yeah, again, I would think after 12 years, uh, it has uh, proven itself. I don't know what more it needs to do, other than just needs to be uh, more widely adopted, and then that will get rid of the volatility but we're here for the volatility at the moment that's why uh, and he does go on to say further down in this article that you know it doesn't take a whole lot of money to fluctuate the price of bitcoin uh, and i would agree but that's when they're buying off the spot market because i mean you look at all the otc buying that's going on at the moment you know grayscale alone more than 51 percent uh, of bitcoin that's been mined this year uh, it has bought and the price of Bitcoin is still kind of saying, staying somewhat, uh, you know, steady around that, <clears throat> excuse me, $30,000 mark. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. So another one uh, on Robin Hood. So not only did they restrict, uh, you know, uh, people being able to buy and sell uh, GameStop and AMC, but they also did the same for cryptocurrencies, particularly because Doge had skyrocketed a thousand percent in a day. And, you know, they come out here and say that they're trying to protect their customers when they do things like that. 
No, they're not. They absolutely are not trying to protect their customers at all. If they were trying to protect their customers, they wouldn't be selling their data to the hedge funds to counter trade against them. That is exactly what's going on. They are absolute crooks, absolute you know, fraudsters, charlatans, you know, there's a lot of other names I'd like to say, but I don't want to get this video banned on YouTube. They need to have the books thrown at them and we need to get rid of them. Uh, you know, absolutely disgusting. I can't believe they would actually sell their own, you know, patrons data to the hedge funds knowing that they uh, trade against them. But I can guarantee you it's because the hedge funds pay a ton for uh, that data, that's why. So again, they were just out to line their own pockets. They didn't care who get hurt, who got hurt whatsoever. It was just a simple uh, cash grab for them and they would throw anyone and everyone under the bus. And again, like I said, if all the Robin Hood people got together and said, you know, we'll offer you more money uh, to sell fake data or, you know, sell data yeah, I guess fake data to them, then they probably would have done that, you know, just out for themselves. Absolutely disgusting. Now, Visa. So Visa could add crypto to its payment network, says CEO. So we already know Visa's getting involved in crypto uh, and things like that. But we go down here. Global financial services, services juggernaut Visa already has its fingers in cryptocurrency via wallet and platform partnerships. Uh, in digital asset companies like BlockFi, Fold, and Crypto.com, they already use you know Visa branded products. They got their own uh, BlockFi, uh, Fold, and Crypto.com Visa cards. Uh, so Visa's already in there. However, CEO Alfred Kelly now suggests that cryptocurrencies could run directly on the Visa network in the future. This is big. I mean, if they start doing that, that is really going to have you know cryptocurrencies to the masses. To the masses again. We need PayPal to, you know, get past this. Americans only buying and selling cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'll have to do some follow up on that and see if they have actually offered it to worldwide yet, or it's just their uh, American customers. But Visa, I mean, yeah, the biggest kind of, you know, credit card company out there. They start adding uh, cryptocurrencies. Get ready and watch the prices absolutely rocket and start to fly. Now, interesting, so there was a whole, a whole lot of stocks that were obviously being shorted uh, by hedge funds and that, and they've actually been removed from things like Robinhood and that, so these hedge funds don't get absolutely caned. And what do we find out? Uh, a cryptocurrency exchange is hoping to uh, come to the rescue, uh, and it's actually Bittrex. Today launched tokenized stocks uh, for GameStop and other companies that have been booted off Robinhood. So the listing includes AMC Entertainment, Nokia, BlackBerry, Nokia Corporation, and iShares Silver Trust, all companies which are being eyed up by internet traders who want to give the finger to Wall Street. I can't say I'm a massive fan of Bittrex. You know, they have outages, but look, all the exchanges do that. But I do like the idea of this. I like the idea that there's going to be an exchange out there that will give... You know, um, yeah, I suppose we can't even see that. say that's decentralised. But just at least give traders the option to, again, you know, bet against these Wall Street guys who've had it too good for too long uh, and have been actively uh, betting against the retail investor. The days are over of uh, guys like this, the big Wall Street guys, you know, and, you know, particularly the hedge funds and that they're going to have to move to decentralization and you know platforms that'll basically do the work for you and be fair to everyone because the days of them being able to you know control things i think they really are numbered decentralization uh, is coming uh, it will take over you know banks will basically be almost completely defunct people will just be going out and finding the protocols that they like the most now there are going to be issues with that i completely agree hacking and all the rest of it but I think the banks that we have today uh, will kind of be null and void. Uh, you won't have to go in, you know, cash is going to go away. We won't have that uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, and to get loans and things like that, it's just all going to be done online. And last but not least, so Ave, the founder of Ave, he's actually angel investing into other projects uh, and specifically DeFi. So... This time last year, Aave only had a few million dollars worth of crypto in it. Since then, it has risen to become the second largest DeFi project on Ethereum with over three billion in crypto committed to its smart contracts. So again, a couple of million, 
to now three billion. Oh, well done, Ave. Love the protocol. Uh, they go, you know, it, it's been revamped and all the rest of it. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Uh, and it goes on to mention some of the things that he's actually invested in. So, uh, so he's looked at Lido, Maple, Slingshot, Swivel, Pull Together. I, I like Pull Together. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, it's kind of like they run a lotto every week. You know, you put in however much you want, and at the end of the week, uh, they simply take the revenue made from your money and everyone else's money and a winner gets it and then you get your money back. So it's a, it's a can't lose lotto system basically. You know, you put in $10 or, you know, whatever it is in crypto, at the end of the week, if you don't win, you get your $10 back. That's how it works. Love pull together. Love the idea of it. Haven't used it, uh, but I've heard a lot about it and I think this is a great idea. But look, he goes on to mention other ones as well. Uh, Satora, Shell Protocol, Pods Finance. So, I mean, uh, if, you know... If he's getting into it, uh, Mr. Kulchilov, uh, I can't even say his name, so we'll just say Stani. Uh, if he's getting into him, uh, I, I consider him to be a pretty kind of smart guy. Maybe a good idea to uh, yeah have a look at these things. Uh, again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. But yeah, uh, love what Ave is doing. Love the thought that he's, you know, getting out there. And you know, again, he's trying to integrate banks into these systems, and that's really what we need. Banks. I don't mind if banks use DeFi. They just can't own DeFi. You know what I mean? Whatever they're going to come out and they're going to try and bring out their own protocols and all the rest of it, and it'll just be the same old crap with a different smell. That's all it's going to be. We need decentralized smart contracts that it works the same for everybody. It's not just, you know, yeah, the really rich people get, you know, this deal where it gets most of the money and everyone else just gets this other one little deal. Uh, these smart contracts will just shuffle money around and do all the work for you and they'll be fairer for everyone. Uh, at least that's the theory behind it. Love to know your thoughts down below on what should happen with Robin Hood. Do you think they should be... Uh, you know, sued, uh, you know, have all sorts of things uh, thrown at them? Or do you think, uh, you know, that that was fair and that Robin Hood are actually looking out for their members uh, when they do things? Uh, information uh, I've found out there is that, again, they were actively selling their data of their users to the hedge funds and the hedge funds were actively counter trading that, uh, you know, taking the money from the retail investors. Uh, and again, to be in hedge funds, you know, you need a minimum of a couple of hundred thousand. Well, some are a little bit cheaper. Some you can get into for around about $50,000 uh, and others are hundreds of thousands of dollars upwards. So they're generally high net worth individuals. Uh, and it's disgusting that, you know, they've already got so much money. Why would you have to go and ruin, you know, the retail trader, the, you know, to counter trade against them? Uh, I think that's disgusting, and especially when you're buying their data. And, you know, it's not the other way around. It's not like us little investors can go, all right, let's get the data from these hedge funds so we can counter trade them. But again, that's uh, why these hedge funds are crying foul about, you know, Wall Street bets and that. Although they weren't getting the data. They were uh, just, you know, finding information out there and went and saw what they had shorted. But I, I guess in some ways that possibly is the data. Uh, but I don't think they bought that data. I think that data was just readily available out there, so... Yeah, love to know your thoughts down below. All right, the markets are looking good. If I could get you to do a favor, go down and click the like button, click the subscribe button, click that little bell icon button so you get all my uh, updates. I put information out every day. Uh, there's almost, you know, never a day where I don't put uh, a vlog out, but there have been a couple of occasions where life gets in the way. Stay safe, be kind to one another. We should hopefully all be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.